Hi, welcome to this Corp Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at an introduction to logarithms. Now, before we look at our logarithms, let's look at our indices. So here we've got 10 squared is equal to 100. So you should be quite familiar with something like this, 10 squared is equal to 100, because 10 times 10 is equal to 100. And you'd be used to writing things in this form. Now, it can be quite useful to write it in a different form where we introduce logarithms. But before we do that, let's just have a look at some of the parts of this. So we have got our 10. 10 is what we call the base. So when you raise something to a certain power, the number that you're raising to the power is called the base. So 10 here is the base. The 2 is what we call the index or the power or the exponent. That's the power or the index or the exponent. And the 100 would be the answer because 10 squared is equal to 100. Now it can be quite useful to write this in a different form by introducing logarithms. So let's look at another way of writing this. So we could write it in this form here where we've got log to base 10 of 100 is equal to 2. Now here we've got log to base 10. The base is 10, so log to base 10. So whatever the base is, we go here, log to base 10 of 100. That's the answer. And then that's equal to whatever the power would be. So what power would you raise 10 by to get to 100? Well, that would be 2. It would be 10 squared is equal to 100. So the power would be 2. So the log to base 10 of 100 is equal to 2. Let's have a look at another one. If we had 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 16, well, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 16. So 2 is the base. That's the number that we're raising to a certain power. The power would be 4 because 2 to the power of 4, and the answer would be 16. Now, if we wanted to introduce logarithms, we could write it in this form. We could write log to base 2 of 16 is equal to 4. So it's saying, what power would you raise 2 by to get to 16? The answer would be 4, because 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 16. And that's it. So if we look at it generally, if you've got a to the power of n is equal to x, so you've got the base of a and the power of n, and that's equal to x, you could write it in this form. You could write log to base a of x is equal to n. So in other words, what power would you raise a by to get to x? The answer would be n because a to the power of n is equal to x and that's where a the base will always be positive it'd be bigger than zero but it won't be equal to one because obviously one times one times one times one is equal to one and so on so the, in terms of the a the base it'll always be positive and in terms of x it'll also be positive as well and that's it so if you've got a to the power of n is equal to x you can write it in this form log to base a of x is equal to n Okay, so let's have a look at some questions. So we've been asked to rewrite the following as logarithms. So we've got 3 to the power of 4 is equal to 81. So here we're going to have log to base 3 because the base is 3. And then of 81. So log to base 3 of 81. And what would the power be? Well, the power would be 4. So log to base 3 of 81 is equal to 4. And that's it. So we've written this as a logarithm. Okay, now we've got 5 cubed is equal to 125. So if we wanted to write that as a logarithm, we'd write log to base 5, because the base is 5, of 125. So we've got log to base 5 of 125. Well, what power would we raise 5 by to get to 125? The answer would be 3. So log to base 5 of 125 would be equal to 3. And that's it. We've rewritten these as logarithms. OK, now let's have a look at some questions where we've got to work out some logs. So here we've got work out the following. And we've got log to base 2 of 8. We just need to think, what power would you raise 2 by to get to 8? Well, 2 cubed is equal to 8, so the power would be 3. So log to base 2 of 8 is equal to 3. If we raise 2 to the power of 3, we get 8. So if we were asked to work out log to base 2 of 8, the answer would be 3. OK, let's have a look at our next one. So now we've been asked to work out log to base 7 of 49. This one's quite nice. If we were asked to work out what log to base 7 of 49 is, we just need to think, what power would you raise 7 by to get to 49? Well, 7 squared is equal to 49, so the power would be 2. So the answer is 2. Log to base 7 of 49 is equal to 2. And that's it. OK, let's have a look at some more. OK, this time we've been asked to work out the following. We've been asked to work out log to base 3 of 81. So we need to think, what power would you raise 3 by to get to 81? Well, 3 to the power 4 is equal to 81 because 3 times 3 is equal to 9 times 3 is equal to 27 times 3 is equal to 81. So that means the answer would be 4. If we do 3 to the power 4, we get that's equal to 81. So log to base 3 of 81 is equal to 4. OK, let's have a look at our next one. So this time we've been asked to work out log to base 10 of 100,000. So we need to think, what power would we raise 10 by to get to 100,000? This is actually quite nice because if we think about it, 10 squared is equal to 100, 10 cubed is equal to 1,000, 10 to the power of 4 would be equal to 10,000, and 10 to the power of 5 would be equal to 100,000. And a quick way to check that is the power would be the number of zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it would be 10 to the power of 5. So that means that log to base 10 of 100,000 would be equal to 5. OK, let's have a look at our next questions. Now, these two are quite important. We've got log to base 8 of 1. So if we wanted to work out this one, log to base 8 of 1, we have to think, what power would we raise 8 by to get to 1? 
Now, if you think back to your indices, if you've got something to the power of zero, that'd be equal to one. So if we had eight to the power of zero, that's equal to one. So what power would we raise eight by to get to one? The answer would be zero. So log to base eight of one would be equal to zero. And we'll come back to that on our next slide. And here we've got another one. We've got log to base four of four. Well, we need to think what power would we raise four by to get to four? Well, four to the power of one is equal to four. So log to base four of four is equal to one. Now these two questions are quite important because if you've got log to base something of one, the answer would be zero. And if you've got log to base something of something, so in other words, log to base a of a, that'd be equal to one. So these two are quite important. And let's have a look at it generally. So if you have log to base a of 1 that would be equal to 0 and log to base a of a would be equal to 1 because if you think about it what power would you raise a by to get to 1 well, that would be 0 and here if you have log to base a of a well, what power would you raise a by to get to a the answer would be 1 and that's it so these are quite important and if you've got a notebook I would recommend you jot those down and you learn those just that log to base a of 1 is equal to 0 and log to base a of a is equal to 1 okay next let's have a look at our next two examples so this time we've been asked to work out log to base 2 of 32 so when you think what power would you raise 2 by to get to 32 well 2 to the power 5 is equal to 32 because 2 times 2 is equal to 4 times 2 is equal to 8 times 2 is equal to 16 times 2 is equal to 32 so that'll be 2 to the power 5 so what power would you raise 2 by to get to 32 the answer would be 5 so that means that log to base 2 of 32 is equal to 5 Okay, let's look at our next example. So this time we've got log to base five of one fifth. Now I like these ones, they're a bit different than the ones we've looked at so far. So we need to think, what power would you raise five by to get to one fifth? So in other words, if you got five to the power of something, what would it be to get one fifth? And think back to your negative indices, that would be negative one. Five to the power of negative one would be one over five or one fifth. So what power would you raise five by to get to one fifth? The answer would be negative one. So log to base 5 of 1 fifth is equal to negative 1. And I like those ones. Think back to your negative indices. Okay, now our next question. Okay, this time we've been asked to work out log to base 10 of 0 0.1. So if we wanted to work out log to base 10 of 0 0.1, we need to think what power would we raise 10 by to get to 0 0.1? Well, if we think about it, 0 0.1 is 1 tenth. So that'd be 10 to the power of negative 1. Because 10 to the power of negative 1 is equal to 1 tenth. And obviously 1 tenth is equal to 0 0.1. So the answer would be negative 1 again. Because 10 to the power of negative 1 is equal to 1 tenth or 0 0.1. Okay, next, this time we've been asked to work out log to base 6 of 136. So we need to think what power would we raise 6 by to get 1 over 36? Well, if we think about it, 6 to the power of negative 2 would be equal to 1 over 36. Because remember, our negative indices, if we've got the power of negative 2, it's 1 over 6 squared. And 1 over 6 squared would be 1 over 36. So that means our answer would be negative 2, because 6 to the power of negative 2 is equal to 1 over 36. So that means that log to base 6 of 136 would be equal to negative negative 2. Okay, let's have a look at two more questions. This time we've been asked to work out log to base 10 of 0.001. So we need to think what power would you raise 10 by to get 0.001. Now before we begin, 0.001 is equal to, well here we've got our units or our ones, then we've got our tenths and then our hundredths and then our thousandths. So that's one thousandth. So 0.001 is equal to one thousandth or one over one thousand. So we need to think what power would you raise 10 by to get one over one thousand? Well 10 to the power of negative three would be equal to one over one thousand because if we had ten to the power of negative three that would be one over ten cubed and ten cubed is a thousand so that means the power would be negative three so that means that the log to base ten of 0.001 would be minus three because ten to the power of negative three is equal to 0.001 or one thousandth and that's it okay let's have a look at one last question this time we've been asked to work out log to base nine of three so we need to think what power would you raise nine by to get to three well, 3 is the square root of 9. So 9 to the power of a half. Think back to your fractional indices. Whenever you square root something, that's to the power of a half. So 9 to the power of a half is equal to 3 because the square root of 9 is equal to 3. So what power would you raise 9 by to get to 3? Well, that would be a half because to the power of a half means square root and the square root of 9 is equal to 3. So that means the log to base 9 of 3 is equal to a half. And that's it. Now, one more thing I want to cover in this video is base 10. So we've looked at logarithms like this in this video. We've got log to base 8 of 64, and it's saying what power would you raise 8 by to get to 64? And the answer would be 2, because 8 squared is equal to 64. Now, sometimes you may encounter logs like this, where we've got a log of 1,000. And you may notice that there's no base mentioned. And if no base is mentioned, the base will be 10. So if you had log of 1,000, it really means log to base 10 of 1,000. And that means the answer would be equal to 3, because 10 cubed is equal to 1,000. And that's it. 
So in this video, we've looked at logarithms. We've looked at the fact that logarithms are just another way of writing our indices. So instead of writing 10 squared is equal to 100, we could write log to base 10 of 100 is equal to 2. We've looked at how to work out logarithms. So if we were asked to work out log to base 2 of 8, it just means what power would you raise 2 by to get to 8? The answer would be 3. And we've also looked at some rules that log to base a of 1 is equal to 0, and log to base a of a is equal to 1. And also the fact that if you have a logarithm where there's no base mentioned, the base will be 10. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at an introduction to logarithms. In our next video, I'll look at how to type in logarithms into our calculator. And then in the video after, we'll look at the laws of logs and hopefully you'll find those useful as well.